So the other couple of warnings about creating systems as well. Uh, don't create systems that create bureaucracy. Sometimes you'll get introduced into systems and you create systems for systems sake. And sometimes you can just get up in systems and you never get around to the point of actually implementation and doing work. It's so easy to feel productive because you're trying to create a system but you're not really doing any work, you're just creating a system that may be some down and usually when you get caught in that loop, you get caught in the loop thinking I just want to get the system perfect. So that makes it even worse because then you keep on pushing out the point at which you get work done. So do a really basic bare bones system and improve the system as you go. And also, this is for me personally, McDonald's creates robots and that's how they get 15 year olds to run their uh, McDonald's franchises. The way I create my systems is I like to give a little bit of wiggle room. I like to make sure that the person can make suggestions and improve and if they come up with new ideas then that can get implemented into the way that we do things. I don't want to have everything such to that granular detail that it will take you three minutes to do keyword research, uh, do this step, this step and this step and once you've done those, uh, that keyword research then jump over to the next task. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more flexible than that. And then, thanks for putting the images in this slide Pete. Um, okay, business systems 2.0. Uh, most people spend too much time on their back end. This, 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 it's a good this, back end. It's all about business is about having a good back end. And, and this is actually something that I, I was fortunate enough to I do some, some interviews and I've been lucky to, to do some interviews with some high people. Rich Sheffrin, one of the people that I mentioned, interviewed him, another guy Jim Fleck that I interviewed and both of them at the same time started to talk about this idea and I thought wow that's, that's quite interesting. We're, we're drummed into us that the money is in the back end and and the idea being you create a series of products, you, you, what you want to do is you, you get your client very, very cheaply and then once they're into your business funnel, then you create back-end products to profit out of that client. So what a lot of entrepreneurs do, they get caught up in creating back-end product. But what I want to suggest is that you, you need to build you need to build a system and you need to know your profit model and the best thing I can do is give you an example of this uh, and then tell you where you should be focusing your time once you've built that back end. Now this, uh, the reason I'm, I'm telling you this in relation to the systems area, this business is a system so I'm giving you the top level system as opposed to going really granular into these subsystems. But a top system, so let's say in my trading business I've got a, a free or a very cheap course called the Ultimate Trading Systems and that's my front end lead generator product. So for those of you who know, you know classic old school marketing, you want to tip leads into the top and then as they progress down this marketing funnel they get marketed more expensive product as they head down. So at the front end up the top here you want a cheap product or a low end product to get people in. Then after that then we go into our second tier product which is you know, our Metastock Programming Study Guide, our TYTP, Triple Your Trading Profits uh, Manual, you'll have your uh, Davis course, you'll have, you know, we've, we've got quite a, an extensive sort of back area here. Then beyond that we have our, our workshops and then after that we have our, actually we, we usually plug it in slightly before that, we have our coaching program which is the OTM, Online Trading Mastermind. So a lot of these second tier products filter into the Online Trading Mastermind and then they get upsold to here or even to coaching. So what you want to do in your business is figure out what that business system is going to look like. That's my, my profit system for the way that my trading works and we're, we're replicating something similar to this now that I'm moving into the small business space but we're creating the same system so you first want to map out this and this is key to helping you define once, once you know this it makes it so much easier to start figuring out well, what systems do I need to implement to make this happen. So a lot of people focus on their back end what they'll do is and I was stuck in this trap as well you then start to think, okay, if the money's in the back end, I just need to build more of these products. But after chatting with Rich and Jim and a few other guys, I started to realise you build this 
part of your system out, then you're, you really should be spending your time tipping as many leads into the top. You need to shift from back-end product creation into lead generation. Because once you, once you build this model, the next step, which is where I'm at now, I want to understand once a client comes in here, on average, how much do they spend? So I can then figure out, okay, if I get 500 clients that I tip into the top of this funnel up here, and then I go of those 500 clients, let's say um, five of them spend uh, on average 500 bucks. So that's $2,500 in total. And then you divide the amount 500 by uh, 2,500 and then you figure out how much is a client worth to me. So someone who's better at maths on the fly. $5 a lead. There you go, bang, you get an extra lolly. Okay, so at, at that five, $5 a lead, now that I know that's $5 a lead and I know my back end profit system, I now focus up here and what do I do? I find as many clients as I can get worth less than $5. That needs to be where you spend your time focusing, not building back-end product.